Thanks to modern day technology, many unsolved mysteries and cold cases can finally find some closure. Camera surveillance, DNA testing, and more advanced and very complicated tools of investigation are being used to determine the whereabouts of missing people. But in the past, human errors have resulted in many people paying an unfair price. What happens when a man is accused of kidnapping, but then 90 years later, the truth is revealed thanks to a simple DNA test? Today, we're going to take a look at the case of Bobby Dunbar. In 1912, four-year-old Bobby Dunbar disappeared during a family getaway at Swayze Lake, Louisiana. The boy's face was placed in newspapers around the country and a nationwide search began. Then in 1913, the boy was apparently found in the state of Mississippi, being cared for by a man named William Cantwell Walters. Bobby's family at first did not recognize him, but after some careful inspection of the boy, the family then assured the authorities that he was indeed Bobby, and thus accused Mr. Cantwell of kidnapping. William was a low-income man and could hardly pay for a lawyer. The law was quite different back then. They didn't need much evidence to charge someone. William pleaded that the child was his own son, and the mother was a woman named Julia Anderson, who for some reason could not take care of the boy, so she gave him full custody. His story did not convince the judge. So William Cantwell was then convicted of kidnapping and the custody of the child was handed over to the Dunbar family. The boy lived his entire life as Bobby Dunbar. Now this story could have ended here, the story of a family tragedy that actually had a happy ending, a criminal behind bars and a happy family reunion. Yet of course, that wasn't the case. Nearly a century later, Margaret Dunbar was always fascinated by her grandfather's story who, yes, was indeed Bobby Dunbar. After he passed away, she began to investigate, digging through newspapers and official records of the case. She even found and talked to the relatives and descendants of Julia Anderson. A minor curiosity about her grandfather's life resulted in a big what if. What if Margaret's grandfather really wasn't Bobby Dunbar? If William Cantwell, the man who spent his days in prison, wasn't a kidnapper? but in fact, her great-grandfather. She convinced her father to undergo a DNA test in 2003, almost 90 years after the case. The results were compared with Alonzo Dunbar, Bobby's younger brother, and no match was found. Margaret's grandfather was indeed not Bobby Dunbar. Bobby Dunbar disappeared in 1912 and was never found. William Cantwell Walters was an innocent man charged with a crime that he did not commit. The boy who lived as Bobby Dunbar never discovered that his real father died in prison, all because the Dunbar family convinced themselves that he was their lost son, and there was no possible way to prove otherwise. So then what happened to Bobby Dunbar? Well, bear in mind that Bobby disappeared at Swayze Lake, which is known to be a habitat of a particular man-eating animal from the Cretaceous period. Regardless, how is it possible that this family could make such a mistake? Even worse, how many people have paid or are paying for crimes they did not commit? Without a doubt, this mystery continues to this day, and it may never be solved. This is indeed a tragic story of two families, the Dunbars who lost their son and William Cantwell, who never got to see his son ever again. Tell me what you think about this case. What could have happened to Bobby Dunbar? Thank you all for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe. And remember, assume nothing and question everything.